Hello, my name is Greg Villalobos. Stick around if you want to find out more about the gear I took on my latest Tet Spain adventure. So I got back from 10 days of Tet Spain yesterday, uh, early in the morning. Um, it was quite an epic journey back. Um, I haven't made the film yet, but by the time you're watching this, uh, I will have done, so go watch wherever it is. You gotta do it, Will. You gotta do it. Get in, get in. <laughs> so the viewers at home are gonna see if we can run Greg Villalobos off the side of a mountain, but. <laughs> all in all, about a thousand miles of riding, um, if you don't count the, the big chunk of getting down to the port down in the south of the UK. Uh, as the way Tet is, there's a lot of road, a lot of trail, a real mix and variety, and it was just a really adventurous European tour, really. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, it was the right balance of road, trails, food, sunshine, mild disasters, jeopardy, mechanicals, um, and just a huge amount of fun um, being away with friends. Um, in this film, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about the gear that I took um, and what I packed. I've done uh, quite a few tech trips now. Um, so if you're interested in this and how my packing's evolved, you can go and find some of my other films from other trips. Um, I kind of find that I refine every single time. And if you don't want to watch any more of this film, and I can leave you with one thing, it's you really don't need as much stuff as you think. <laughs> okay, let's get going. So in front of me is the core essence of what I took. Um, I've also had a, a rucksack on, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but it consists of a, a Krieger OS-12, Krieger OS-12, so two of those uh, making 24 litres and they are uh, attached to the bike via the OS base system onto my KTM 450 EXC. Uh, this is the Giant Loop Rogue, which I think is 17 litres. There's an OS-6 here and this is a Giant Loop uh, uh, Diablo Pro tank bag. Um, and I also have a Krieger T18 rucksack. So that was the essence of all of my luggage. And I'm just gonna kind of open this stuff up and show you what's inside. So. This is the Giant Loop um, Rogue, a 17 litre dry bag. Um, and none of this gear has been unpacked since I got back, so it's all pretty mucky and smelly. It's literally how I packed it on the last day of the trip when I um, headed for home. So, so this is what I use to uh, keep all of my, my home, essentially, my sleeping gear. So in here is my tent, my sleeping bag, and my sleeping mat. And that's everything I need when I get to camp. I can go straight to this bag and get everything I need um, off the bike and set up for, um, for sleeping. Uh, it's pretty handy to have everything in one bag there. Uh, it knows that you don't have to kind of unpack other stuff to get to your tent, essentially. Uh, it wasn't so bad on this trip. It's, it was very sunny and we didn't camp every night. But if the weather's bad, you just want to be able to get everything you need in one go. And this is strapped to the top of my bike behind me, kind of acts as a little cushion. Also, it's quite handy because I've my rucksack's quite heavy because it's got my camera lenses in and, uh, and it kind of sits on the top of here um, and takes a bit of the pressure off my shoulders while I'm riding. So, oh, not that one. Where's the other one? There you go. This is my tent. Um, uh, it's a Terra Nova uh, Pioneer 2, I think. When you buy your tent, 
it'll come to you in one bag with your poles and uh, your pegs and all the rest of it. And the kind of the natural thing to do there is to use that bag for your transport. I don't do that. Um, this tent has an inner and outer, most tents do. When you go off um, camping, even if it's good weather, quite often in the morning, your uh, tent is wet on the, especially on the inside of the outer due to condensation. So it's, if there's dew on the grass and it's wet on the grass, the chances are that your tent's gonna be wet. Um, if you are, have got sunshine in the morning, it will dry out pretty quickly. We always kind of do what we can to get our stuff dry before we pack away, but you can't always do that. And if it's been raining, you can't do that. So what I do is I separate my inner and outer, um, which allows me to keep one bag for the wet side, and one bag for the dry side. So in this case here, um, in this dry bag, that is my inner. And then this dry bag, which actually becomes a wet bag, <clears throat> is my outer. And what that means is that if this is wet, I don't have to fold it up with the dry stuff, which makes the dry stuff wet. I can keep the wet stuff wet and keep the dry stuff dry. So when I come to put my tent out that evening, uh, I can essentially, if the weather's good, uh, I can put my wet stuff out to dry before I put them together, or I can, if it's raining, I can keep the wet stuff wet and keep the dry stuff dry. Uh, that's just kind of a little thing that I've developed. Uh, yeah, if, if it's bright sunshine or you're camping at altitude and there's no dew or anything like that and everything's dry, you probably don't need to separate these two out um, and you can just stuff it all away. But uh, that is my top tip inner and outer in their own bags. I guess the other thing to point out here is that for all of my gear, even though they're going into dry bags and stuff bags, I keep all of these quite loose so I don't over stuff and, um, and try and get everything really tight before I put it in the bag because once it is a tight little ball, <clears throat> it doesn't want to create a, go into a different shape um, and you end up with lots of little pockets um, of, of air essentially inside your bag. And I find that it's quite hard to pack like that. So I put everything inside their own dry bags, but I don't roll them down tight. Um, I just shove it in and I do my final stuff when I compress the, the bag when I close it. So <clears throat> these are the poles and these are the pegs. As you can see, it's quite a lot of volume that you can actually pack down quite small. The thing to point out here, pegs are pegs, is that when I was buying this tent, I made sure to, to find out the length of these poles and to make sure that they would sit comfortably inside my bag um, rolled up. It would have been easy to buy a tent with poles that fold down another six or eight inches or something like that. <clears throat> and that would really restricted kind of how I transport these. Uh, you can even get shorter ones, I think, for bike packing where these fold even shorter, but obviously then they're thicker. Right, what's next? So this is my sleeping mat. Um, it's a Thermarest Neo Air, I think. Um, it packs really small. Now you've kind of got two options when it comes to sleeping mats. One is a self-inflating one, which you don't need, I mean, you do need to top up, but it, it, you don't need to kind of sit there and blow, blow, blow. Or you can get one that is purely um, inflated by air. Now, the self-inflating ones are okay, but they're not so thick um, and they uh, tend to pack much bigger. I've had those in the past. This one packs really small. Um, it does take a little bit of puff to get going, but it's not ridiculous. Um, and my main kind of benefit of this really is its pack size is very small and when you inflate it, it's maybe about two inches thick. And I found, well, I made a decision once we started a, a family and I had young kids and sleep became a very, very kind of precious commodity to invest heavily <laughs> into whatever I could do to get a good night's sleep. And this was the best that I found. Some of the other guys had some even um, kind of more high-tech versions of these um, that have got bags that you can kind of air bags you can fold down to help inflate it and stuff like this uh, but for me this has been a good option um, yeah okay so the final thing in the bag is my sleeping bag um, 
I love this sleeping bag. It is the uh, Rab Neutrino uh, 400. So I have a, uh, a I've got two um, Rab sleeping bags. One is this one, and the other one is a, uh, a lighter one, which is more for summer. It's kind of, I think it's a two season. So we were going to the Pyrenees in springtime in Spain. You never really know. We were fully prepared for cold. We'd seen some other people that had been there recently and they were in the snow line. So we all took warm gear. It was a bit of a tricky one because we kind of thought it might be hot, it might be cold. So you had to take something for all conditions. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's a three season. Um, I'll put some information on about what like the comfort levels are. Um, Again, it packs very, very small. It's a down sleeping bag. The benefit of down is the pack size. So you pay more for a down um, bag, but it packs much, much smaller. So when you compress it, you compress your, well, it compresses down really tight, but when it comes out, all of those down feathers kind of relax into their natural shape and, and catch the air, which is what provides the warmth much more efficiently than synthetic. Um, so again, this, this will pack even smaller if I were to compress it here. Um, I kind of got to lean on it. Um, but once it's in the bag and you've compressed the bag, it packs probably another, you can take a quarter off that, I think, maybe. Um, it's not the absolute smallest in the world, but for the warmth it gives, it's, it's brilliant. Um, I wasn't cold at all on this trip. I think it... You know, I've taken this out in zero degrees and I have been a little bit cold and had to put more layers on. On this trip, the coldest night we had was up at altitude and I had my Baltic insulated on as well, um, but it was fine. I was fully prepared for cold. What I find when I am camping in the cold is it's actually, it's quite easy to layer up your uh, upper body, uh, your um, uh, by putting a warm jacket on but it's your legs and your feet that get cold and that's what keeps you awake at night so I had thermals and extra socks and all the rest of it for that eventuality but I didn't need it there you go and you'd be surprised really at how something when it's packed away is so small and you leave it out, um, get it out, stick in your sleeping bag. Oh, <laughs> it stinks, <laughs> I need to give it a wash. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you leave it in your sleeping bag, you go and have dinner, you come back and it's kind of just, looks like this big, warm, cuddly duvet by the time you come back. Um, on the sleeping front, uh, oh, sorry, on the washing front, uh, they do say that um, down, uh, down has a more limited lifespan when it comes to washing. And actually what Rab have is a service where you can send stuff back and they'll professionally wash it for you and send it back to you. Um, uh, so if you're going to be doing a lot of washing, then synthetic might be better. Um, but really for the amount you use it, you know, amount of trips that I do a year, I'm absolutely happy with, with um uh, with down, I don't really feel like I need to regularly wash that I might do with a synthetic. Anyway, it's at the very least, this is going to get a good airing. It might not get washed, but it's going to get a good airing. <laughs> So this is an OS-12, I've got two of these, one on each side making 24 litres. Um, they attach with the OS base to the bike, I found they're a very good system for um, rackless bikes um, such as the KTM EXC, I've also used them on my PR7, um, they're, um, yeah, they're a great option for this kind of riding. Um, they come in an OS 6, an OS 12, and an OS 18. I find that the OS 18s are a bit big for my bike. Um, it also kind of focuses me on making sure I don't bring a load of rubbish that I'm not going to, well, not going to say rubbish. It makes sure I only bring what I need. The more you do this kind of trip and this kind of packing, the more you'll figure out what you do and don't need and what your comfort levels are. Um, my comfort levels are pretty low. Also this kind of trip, I, I one of the aims of the trip is to go out and be a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So I make a point of not bringing quite a lot of gear and just bringing the essentials. So let's have a look what's in this one. Well, 
wash bag. This is uh, the a prototype of the Adventure Spec stash pouch, um, and that's got toiletries in, so toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, stuff like that. It's also got some um, offer, uh, some uh, medical essentials, uh, first aid kit. So it's got uh, bandages. Um, what else? It's got uh, ibuprofen and a few other stuff that hopefully you'll never need on the trip. Um, yep. <clears throat> pair of trainers. Uh, kind of odd to talk about a pair of trainers. Um, I've done trips in the past where I haven't taken any extra shoes and I've just used my CD Adventure uh, 2 uh, motorcycle boots and that was it. Um, I think that's fine for an overnighter because you can be a little bit uncomfortable but if your boots get wet for any reason like you're really sweating into them or you've done a river crossing they can be uncomfortable to have to wear around camp um, on you know day after day so a pair of shoes to give your feet a bit of a break is a good idea. The point with these are that look out Look how small they pack. They're essentially just the rubber sole with a bit of fabric on top. They're not much bigger than a pair of flip-flops. And that allows me to stash them down the side there. So if you were kind of going out looking for something specifically for camping um, and uh, kind of multi-day trips, that kind of thing, it's worth, I mean, they're kind of half the size of what a normal trainer would pack down to. So, um, uh, and offer a bit more um, sturdiness than a pair of flip-flops. So yeah, go thin uh, and I'll just slide down. Okay, okay so this is a, a dry bag. You'll notice it's not compressed. Like I said, I do my final compression when I close the bag. I don't kind of compress stuff before they go in pair of trousers, pair of uh, Bridgedale Merino socks. They're quite expensive, but they're very comfortable. And the important thing is that they dry out very, very quickly because they're Merino. Um, so I have two pairs of these. One pair I'd be riding in, the other pair I stashed away. Um, and I try and do my best to always kind of wash a pair and keep them clean, just using soap. If I'm in a hotel or something, I can wash them in the sink. Um, Adventure Spec Core Long Leg um, for a bit more warmth when I'm riding. Uh, let's see. Two pairs of Adventure Spec Core Shorts. So that was all my underwear that I took. So I'd be riding in a pair and I'd have a pair in the bag. Again, at every opportunity I would wash a pair. So I've always got a clean pair in the bag. Um, couple of merino t-shirts. Uh, I was wearing the super shirt on this trip and I prefer to have something quite lightweight uh, against my skin underneath the super shirt. Um, so these are kind of fairly basic kind of merino tops. Again, they're light, they're thin, um, they tend not to smell that much. And also most importantly, when they wash, they dry very, very quickly. A couple of regular cotton t-shirts to kind of where at camper and hotels. A thick thermal top and a thick thermal pair of leggings. And that was it, that was everything, all my clothing um, in addition to what I was wearing on the bike while I was riding. Um, the thermal stuff here was really just prepping for cold stuff because um, I didn't know what we would need. In the end, I wore the thermal top once, the thermal um, base layer once on the motorway ride back to the um, ferry where it was quite wet and cold. I would happily have left that if I wanted and it would have made a bit more room. Um, these things I didn't actually need, um, but I took them largely, I took, the thermal leggings largely for comfort in the camp, in the tent at night, um, which is my experience is actually my cold legs is what, what keeps me awake. Um, what else, anything here that I wouldn't have taken? Maybe just those, what, uh, I probably didn't need both of these t-shirts. I could probably have, you know, okay, that's the potentially ditched pile. Um, everything else I used, what would, I have taken, I would probably have taken another pair of uh, core shorts. Um, 
I had a bit of a dodgy tummy one day, and uh, <laughs> I won't go into too much detail, but it would nice have been nice to have a, 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 another pair of underwear. Um, yeah, uh, I think it was a little tight just having two pairs of um, short pants uh, on this trip. Yeah, that's uh, one for next time. But yeah, other than that, that was everything that I took that I wasn't wearing. Um, what was I wearing? Well, I'll make another film about that um, in detail, but essentially I had, from top to bottom, a uh, pair of City Adventure 2 boots. I had the new Adventure Spec Linesman pant, which uh, is not out yet, but will be out soon. Um, I had my core shorts under that. I had a um, Merino t-shirt, then I had the super shirt. Um, if it was cold, I had the Baltic insulator, the Baltic hybrid uh, on top of the super shirt. Um, if it wasn't cold, my Baltic hybrid was in my rucksack. Then I had my linesman jacket, um, and that didn't have armor in it because I was wearing the super shirt, because that's the, the armor is in the super shirt. If it was hot, I took the sleeves off the linesman jacket and wore it as a gilet, and that's what I wore most of the time. I also had an Aquapack waterproof jacket and a waterproof overpant, which I'll talk about and show you in a minute. But, um, and then up on top, I had my helmet, which is a Shubus E1, I think, um, flip up adventure helmet. Uh, and on my hands, I had um, for the road sections where it was cold and we're spending a lot of time on the tarmac, um, I had a waterproof pair of uh, road gloves, which are Rico. And then for the trails, I was wearing the new Adventure Spec Alpine glove. Um, I also took in here a spare oil, uh, a spare air fil, a spare oiled air filter for my KTM EXC 450. Um, didn't get used. I didn't know how dusty it was going to be. Um, so it, in my experience, I've only ever really used to needed to use this when I've drowned the bike and the air filter that's on the bike has got very wet and I've had to wring it out and it's been handy to have another one to just put on. Um, so this is a bit of a disaster emergency. We did about a thousand miles um, and the air filter on the bike was not perfect by the time we got back, but it was far from terrible. Um, so yeah. Um, and then also my spare inner tube. Um, so this is a 21 inch uh, front tube, but it's a Motos. Um, it's just the standard thickness. It's not a very, very thick one because it's really the emergency tube and I didn't want to kind of hack, lug around a really big, thick, heavy tube. Um, the point here is that uh, you can take a front inner and put it on the rear if you need to, but you can't put a rear on the front and I didn't want to have to take two spare tubes. The other thing I did on my bike was when I fitted it, um, I ran um, heavy duty tubes, not ultra heavy duty, but heavy duty tubes. And I also put um, slime inside those, which help uh, to seal itself if it does get a puncture. Um, and I ran uh, probably higher than normal um, pressures. so high 20s, um, no one on the trip got a puncture. Um, we didn't have to take a single wheel off, which was great. Okay. This is the other OS12 on the other side. So in here, This is my cooking gear. And to be honest, I always um and ah about whether or not to bring this because you can, if in a, in a pinch you can eat your food cold and really you're only taking this, or I'm only taking this for the comfort of a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, and actually it probably only got used twice on this trip because every morning we'd pack up and go to a cafe and have a nice cafe solo. So uh, if you knew you were going out into like remote areas, you definitely would want to have some cooking gear. I could easily have left this and saved quite a bit of space. Um, so in, in here, 
dry coffee. I've thought about doing the posh AeroPress jobby, but it's just too big for the amount. So you just want to go maximum enjoyment for the minimum amount of um, stuff. So some dry coffee, uh, a mug, <laughs> whiskey, fold up spork, gas burner, lighter, a little sponge for cleaning, a cook pot, some gas. So I've tried to save space before and not taken the mug and just used this, um, but the problem is that it's really good at getting water hot and conducting heat to heat water up, but it you know, ah, 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 it burns your lips. So you can't really drink your coffee until it's cold. Um, so that's why I uh, took the luxury of a, uh, a, a, a mug. Yeah, okay, so that's my cook gear. Let's get rid of that. Okay, what else have we got in here? Okay, another dry bag. This is This is the new Adventure Spec Baltic Insulator Jacket. Um, this is the new colour, the blue one. Um, it, you know, you could argue that it's taking up like half of one of your panniers and is it really necessary? Now, again, we didn't know where we were going to be and what the temperature was going to be. Um, a lot of the guys had this and it got worn a lot. You take off your gear at the end of the day, if you're in the mountains in the altitude, you stick this on and it's just fantastically warm. Uh, at night when it was hot, I was using this in here as a pillow. Some of the guys took inflatable pillows as well. I'm not a massive fan, although I haven't actually used one. I just find that clothing inside a dry bag is a comfy pillow. <laughs> um, and then on the one night where it was quite cold in the tents, I put this on uh, inside my sleeping bag and it kept me warm. But yeah, um, it's a surprisingly versatile and quality bit of kit. Uh, and I can't, couldn't really see myself going camping without it. Um, it's just, yeah, very, very comfortable. Towel, travel towel, uh, pack small, dries quickly. So the rest of that pack is tools that I fortunately didn't use at all. So a pump, tire levers. I can't, I've found that I, you can change a tire with just two levers, but it is easier with three. This one, these are Motion Pro ones and it's got a ratchet jobby thing adapter on the end. Also, I guess the other thing to note is that that is the right size to take the nut off my wheel axles. Um, so yeah means you don't need to take another tool for that. Uh, Motion Pro Trail Tool, um, really handy. Use it all the time, didn't have to use it on this trip. Um, what else? Gorilla Tape, really strong stuff. Cable ties, I did use cable ties, but someone else's. Uh, giant Lube Pronghorn Straps. Spare pair of brake pads, didn't know how dusty it was going to be. I put new brake pads on before I left and they're absolutely fine. This is the, um, the Motion Pro T6 trail chain tool, um, which is a, a very kind of uh, lightweight tool for uh, breaking and replacing chain links. And then in here I've got all sorts of other bits. I've got a spark plug remover, I've got a spoke tool few nuts and bolts. What have I got? Uh, it's the metal weld, which is always kind of handy. I've never had to use it on the trail, but if you crack a casing or something, I've got a spare um, spark plug, um, spare fuses. What's that? Uh, puncture repair kit. You know, keep your inner tube going for as long as you can. Uh, spare rivet link. Um, the rest of it's just nuts and bolts and whatnot. So um, yeah, just the essentials really. In here I've got a uh, little can of WD-40. Probably should have used that a bit more on my chain than I did. 
little tire pressure gauge. <laughs> these are my luxury. So these are off a mountain bike. This is a um, you know compressed air for doing your, your tire. And I found you can actually do one motorcycle tire off one of these. If I wanted to go super light, I probably wouldn't have taken those because I've got this. But yeah, um, it just makes it a lot less sweaty uh, when it comes to inflate a, a tire on the trail. So yeah, that's uh, that was my tool. Okay, this is the OS6, um, and this was strapped onto the very back of my bike, onto the uh, Giant Loop uh, Rogue uh, roll top bag. Um, in the past, I on my PR7, I had a really neat way of carrying my waterproof luggage behind the screen um, of the bike, but I don't really have that option on my EXC. So this really, okay. Sun cream, um, which uh, I was very surprised to need to buy. Uh, it turns out in Spain you can only get full block or nothing. You can't get anything in the middle, but a bit of sun cream. Um, but yeah, so this was where I kept my waterproofs. So I wanted my waterproof somewhere handy that I could get to them quickly if it really was hammering with rain. So this is the um, Adventure Spec Aquapack jacket. It's very lightweight, um, kind of compressible. Uh, waterproof jacket. It's the kind of thing that's just designed to be stashed away. Uh, you don't necessarily want to be wearing this all the time, especially if it's not raining, but when it is raining you just want to be able to get hold of it quickly. Um, and then a pair of waterproof, pair of waterproof over trousers. Um, the guys had all sorts of different ones. Um, you, you, you want to be able to keep, uh, if it's only a light drizzle you kind of want to keep your core and your body, upper body warm. It's, that's also warm and dry, and that's also what's hitting the rain as you're riding through it a lot. Quite a lot of people endure a little bit of moisture on their, le on their legs. Um, your boots come up to your knees, so it's kind of only your thighs and kind of trunk that are getting wet. Um, but yeah, uh, just a, a, any old pair of waterproof pants. I say that because partly we haven't got a pair of over waterproof over pants yet, but we will do at some point. But for the moment, um, yeah, uh, I guess the the thing here, these are I think the climb forecast ones. They unzip all the way up to the top of the thigh, so it makes it very easy to get them on and off. Some emergency nuts. Uncle Ben's rice, one, two, three, <laughs> four. Total overkill, didn't use any of them. Uh, did eat one meal uh, while we were camping, but that was given to me by uh, Will, my mate, because he owed me one from the last time. I could probably easily have just taken two. Really, it's just you go, you find somewhere and you haven't had a chance to eat your dinner yet. You know you've got some food if you need it, um, just to put some calories back in after a day's riding. Two for two pounds, uh, they're kind of a fraction of the price of the proper dehydrated camping gear, um, but take up a bit more room. And then the final thing in here is the biggest thing that I am embarrassed about. <laughs> Um, so I have a padlock and a bicycle style chain, so chain and lock. So uh, on my KTM EXC traditionally they don't have an ignition key. I have installed one for this trip. Um, now on this kind of trip we were never far from the bikes. You camp next to your bike or you, whenever you choose to stay you'll choose somewhere that you can you know, it's remote and there's no one around or if you're in the city you're going to choose somewhere where it's got a bit of secure parking. Um, I just didn't know, you don't know where you're going to be. If I was going to go and park up in Bilbao and have a walk around, I'm definitely not going to leave my EXE un, uh, on its own without someone near it or unchained. So this was here just to give me the options. I've taken it on my last kind of European tech trip and I never used it and I didn't use it again and it's quite heavy. It's just there if I need it. Um, yeah. 
I did see on the ferry someone with a big Africa twin and he had a great big chain and all the rest of it, but I don't know. I think if I was traveling on my own, I think I would probably use that more just for peace of mind. I'm, I'd never have had to even think about chaining my bike up when I'm going to sleep in a tent. Uh, it's just not really been an issue at all. It just, I guess, gives you a bit of peace of mind if you have to walk around a town square or something and be away from the bike for a bit especially the kind of bike that I've got. Okay, the tank bag, this is a Giant Loop um, Diablo Pro. I think they, you can get a bigger one, and this is the smaller one. You might be able to get an even smaller, smaller one. Um, didn't really want to take a tank bag on this trip, but one of my jobs on this kind of journey is to uh, document it with camera gear and that takes up quite a lot of space if you were just shooting on an iPhone or not shooting anything you could save loads of space um, and weight but I need to take some gear <coughs> so <coughs> so the camera that I am filming on now um, lives inside here most of the time and that's with a 35 mil lens uh, I also have a bigger lens which I'll show you in a minute um, and I keep it in my tank bag so it's there and I can grab it really quickly wherever, whenever I want. You can jump off the bike, undo that, boom, away you go. Um, uh, what else is in here? Right, there's, there's not a huge amount in here. Um, I've got a little... little leather man which is just handy to have a knife and a pair of pliers handy um, I think I've got a little allen key um, in there so they're just kind of easy accessible my other toolkits at the bottom of my other bag so uh, it's just uh, you know if you have a proper mechanical then yeah you're gonna get everything out to get to those tools but it's just you can do most stuff with this most quick and easy stuff um, and then this bag here is got all of my it's got a, a large power bank in it and it's got all my USB chargers and battery chargers and everything and all the cables. Um, I don't have a USB socket on the bike. I don't really trust them. In the past I've had them and they've drained the battery of the bike. Um, I've also, the, the, this is quite a big um, battery pack. I'll show you. It's quite a big one. Um, and what I tend to do is I'll be in my tent at night charging everything off this, everything from my helmet comms to my um, camera batteries, uh, my iPhone and all the rest of it. And because that's so big, I can get a, <clears throat> a couple of full charges of everything off that. Um, and then when I'm in a hotel uh, or even at lunchtime in a cafe, I'll charge this up off a wall, off a socket somewhere. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never ever had to charge anything off the bike. People do. I don't. Um, and then, yep, spare SD cards. This is the Krieger T18 uh, backpack rucksack. I've got a T9 as well. Um, the T9 really is a just a water bladder with a little bit of extra storage. It's great for just kind of day trips. And if I didn't take my camera gear, I probably would have taken the T9 because I quite like having um, less on my bike on my back um because it's you end up carrying quite a lot of weight but for this trip uh i i needed this for my camera gear so in here um okay so travel documents <clears throat> water bladder uh I don't know how big that is actually. I don't know what the literage is. Um, oh, three liters, three liters I think intake. So yeah, enough to fill it up. I am, um, most of the time I was just buying water bottles and decanting them into here. Um, the one day I did fill it up from the tap, uh, two days later, my tummy really let me know. <laughs> so I thought I would be totally fine drinking the local tap water over in Spain, but it turns out it was not a good idea. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's just water bladder. T9 
tech buff, uh, also face mask, uh, which is pretty essential these days. Uh, the best tip that I got from this was there's a lot of snorers uh, on our trip. So at night you kind of can always hear each other in the tent. So I put some earplugs in and this was a revelation. Just <laughs> there's something about keeping your eyes closed. Also in a tent, it's quite, when the sun comes up, it's quite bright and it wakes you up. Um, this, it, it muffled the noise with the earplugs uh, and kept my eyes tight shut. And I'm considering doing that at home because I don't sleep very well and I slept very well like that. Woolly hat uh, was helpful uh, on a, maybe one or two nights because when it was cold. Um, it's hat helpful when you're cold in the tent um, in your sleeping bag, you can put it on as well. I wish I'd had a sun hat, uh, you know, a cap with a visor. Uh, I was more hot and sweaty and, you know, sheltering from the sun than I was freezing on this trip. Um, but yeah. Sunglasses, wore those most of the time. Uh, this is my, um, I use this more when I'm riding on my own and I need to shoot stuff because you're shooting yourself and you need something to hold the camera. But this is a little Leo photo tripod. Uh, I love this thing. It's quite expensive. You don't have to kind of buy a fancy one like this, but um, uh, if you're doing any kind of time-lapse stuff or anything like that, it's quite handy to have. Um, and then this is this is the main reason why I had this bag is this is a Canon um, uh, 70 to 200 mil lens that I use on my 5D Mark IV uh, camera. It's full of it's full of dust, but yeah. So that sits on the front of my camera. Um, it's massive. Um, it's not as heavy. This is the F, uh, F4 version. You can get an F2, uh, maybe F2 or 2.8 version, which is similar size, but a lot heavier. Uh, I chose this because it is actually for its size, relatively lightweight. Um, but yes, the, the lens on my camera most of the time is a wide lens. This allows is a telephoto lens and lets me get a very, very different image um, and was a sacrifice that I was worth making in order to get the footage that I got with it. Um, but yeah, so that lived in my bag most of the time. Occasionally I would uh, attach it to my camera and then if we were just jumping in the bike and moving on, I would leave the, the camera body on it and shove everything in my bag all at once. Oh yeah, so a little dry bag, got a set of gloves in here, so I was mostly riding in these um, Rika something or others. Um, bought these just before I left. These are waterproof uh, and really kind of aimed at uh, road riding. Um, and I knew that we were going to have to do you know, several hundred kilometers of road riding. So these were on for, um, and actually they came in really handy on the way back because it absolutely hammered with rain all day on the motorway on the way back. And these kept me dry. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're quite big, um, but I bought these ones because they don't have a great big long arm cuff, which is something that I'm not really a big fan of. And they do kind of go reasonably small. Um, then got the um, Adventure Spec uh, Alpine glove for the, a lot of the trail riding we were doing. So these um, provide a bit of wind uh, protection, um, but you know, you can see the difference, you know, they are, you, you, if you're going to kind of ride in the rain with these on, you're going to get wet and cold, but if it's boiling hot and scorching sunshine and you're riding trails, these give you a, a lot of feel on those levers. And for me, provide as much protection that I am comfortable with um, doing trail riding. Um, and then I had a spare pair of um, Climb um, Dakar Pro gloves. These are quite old now, um, but I just find it's quite handy. To, I didn't use these at all on this trip, I think maybe once, um, but it's just handy to have a spare pair in case, you know, you leave a set of your gloves on your bike and you ride off and they fall off or something like that, or these get soaking wet for whatever reason. And it's just handy to have another pair that you can put on if you need it um, for all the size that they take up.
Head torch is the last thing in that bag. Well, it's not quite the last thing, but um, yeah, easy thing to forget. <laughs> and the last things in this bag are the remnants of my side stand off my KTM EXC. What, what have you done? Uh, the good old faithful has done what they do. The, the snap bolt, uh, which resulted in my side stand breaking, which meant that I, for half the trip, had to just lean my bike, uh, which is no drama, but a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, yeah, I need to drill that out and replace it. So, yeah. So that's everything, that's everything that I took. Um, I feel every time I do this, I get a bit better um, and I learn. Obviously you're going to different places every time, so you need different stuff. I was pretty happy, to be honest, with, uh, there wasn't, I pretty much used almost everything and there wasn't anything that I really needed more of other than another pair of pants, um, core shorts. Um, but yeah, I enjoy the process of packing and unpacking and um, some people have a great big long spreadsheet and they go to that and they tick everything off every time they go, that's fine. For me, um, I quite enjoy the creativity of approaching it new every time. Um, and so far, I haven't forgot anything really important. And I guess the other thing is, look, I'm not going to outer Mongolia. I'm going for 10 days around Europe. You know, anything that you really need, you can find. Uh, you might have to take a little detour through a town or something like that, but mostly you'll be okay. Anyway, um, I'm sure people will have opinions around uh, what I've taken, what they would take. Feel free to leave them in the comments. If you've made it to the end of this film, well done. Um, I suspect that maybe you haven't got a huge amount of experience camping and you're looking for some advice. I hope you've taken some from here. I think no two people will take the same things. Um, if I did the same process with the rest of the guys, I think you'd have a very different table full of gear. Um, so yeah. If you've made it this far and you want to see this stuff being used, go watch the film. Wow, look at that castle up there. If you've enjoyed this, uh, but you don't want to spend however many minutes, I don't know, it might even be up to an hour, I don't know, um, listening to me talk every time, uh, you can get me in bite size uh, proportions in our weekly email newsletter. So just go to adventurespec.com forward slash subscribe and you can sign up there. And I basically take a lot of the stuff that I've communicated here and fire it out in much, much smaller, um, uh, bite-sized bits every week. Okay, thank you. Um, enjoy your tech trip. I will see you soon.